In this lab, we're going to analyze what the vulnerability can be by reverse engineering the vulnerable function both in the vulnerable version and in the patch version. We're going to quickly see that it's quite difficult to do so and we're going to have to think about possible ways to solve different problems to be able to understand the actual vulnerability. Now, it's your turn. The goal of this lab is to make you reverse engineer the actual TM Recover Resource Manager vulnerable function that we saw is part of the diff. And the goal is going to be to document the code in both the vulnerable and patch binary. And here it's, it's really okay to spend all the time you need to annotate the function, define the C types, as you really need to do that just for that particular function. You don't need to look at any other function in that tm.sys kernel driver at all. However, you will quickly see that it can be quite challenging to document the code if you don't know what are the manipulated objects in the function. If you use IDA Pro, you're going to need to create your own IDB from scratch by loading both versions of the file and start documenting them. If you use Ghidra, we provide a Ghidra project with a blank version of that kernel driver, not reversed at all. And we also provide the same file with lots of annotation after we have reversed it. So in your case, you can take the blank version and try to reverse it as much as you can in order to make it as clear as possible and ideally reach annotations as good as the annotated version we provide. So one idea to help with that would be to debug that function and we would be able to analyze what the arguments are in the debugger. However, to be able to do that, we need a way to reach that function somehow. So we need to find functions we would call from username that would allow us to hit that code. Another thing to notice is that the standard Windows functions being called like ke wait for single object, ke release mutex, etc. are not known by Ghidra. They are actually known by Ida. But if you reverse engineer in Ghidra, you're going to need to define them as they are actually publicly documented and their arguments are known. Another thing to notice is that all the kernel transaction manager types are not known by Ghidra, but some of them are publicly documented. So actually defining them in Ghidra is going to help to understand what is touched by this function. And the final thing to note is that there are actually negative indexes accessed from pointers. So here I'm asking you, what could that be? Try to think about it. So if we look at our debugger VM in the tools reverse folder, we have the tm.sys for the patch version as well as the vulnerable version. If you use IDA Pro, you're going to need to load these two files into new projects. If you use Ghidra, you're going to see that it's already loaded into the project we provide. We can see different versions of the same file. tmvuln.sys in the lab one, that one is the one we're interested in. It's just been loaded into the project without any modification. So that's the default if you load it yourself. Lab 1.3 is actually an updated version after manual analysis. That's basically the version we want to target when we modify Lab 1.1. And then the latest version is basically the one you can use later with all the improvements in the code. That's the best we can do. We load the tmvuln.sys in the lab1.1. If we look at the bookmarks and sort them by category, one of them won't have any. It's a manual bookmark that has been added. It's going to help you locate the vulnerable function we want to modify. If we load the same file from lab1.3, we're going to see that it has a lot more things. Here, this is defined as a type. And the type is defined, so it has access to structure fields. If we go back to the previous one, we can see that only offsets are accessed through this argument. We are interested in the TM Recover Resource Manager function. The first thing we want to do is to check online if this function is actually public. As we can see, it should take as an argument a resource manager. So we're going to define the argument param1 by hitting the l function. Using the l key, we can define it.
you can see all the accesses to the resource manager. The next thing is to check if the K resource manager type is defined. P stands for pointer, so it's a K resource manager star. Looking the data type manager tab, we can search for the K resource manager and see that no type is defined. If we look for another one like key event, we see that it is defined. Some of them are defined. But the key resource manager is not defined. So you want to rename all the variables you can with names that are actually useful to you. Because we know it's a key resource manager, and some accesses are done through that object, we want to define the type for that particular object. So if we look for care resource manager on the Virgilus website, we go on to x64, Windows 10, so we are working on 1809, and then we look for care resource manager. We have this structure. The problem we're going to have if we, want, if we want to import that structure is that substructures may not be defined. For now, it's OK. We're just going to import a structure with the right offsets, and each member will be a character array, just so it aligns correctly. So from the Virgil's website, we're going to copy the key resource manager structure into Notepad++. The idea is we're going to define as many fields as we can. I'm going to show you how to define all the fields up to mutex and you'll be able to do the rest. All we're interested in at the moment is the different offsets. We're going to go into Ghidra and on tmvuln.sys we go new structure. We're going to define a key resource manager structure and the first field needs to be 18 hex and be named notification available. So we define a string. Here it's asking for the size. You know it's 18 hex. Then we have a cookie which is a ulong. Then we have a state of size 4, similar to an integer. And finally, we have a flag of 8 bytes. So it's a long, long. And finally, a mutex. For the mutex, we know it's size 60 minus 28. So if we do 60 hex minus 28, it gives us 38 hex. And we name it a mutex. Now we're happy about the beginning of our structure. We're going to save it. Now if we go into our data type manager and look for key resource manager, we can see it's defined. We want to define our resource manager object, which is the first argument as a key resource manager pointer. Retype variable. It's a pointer. Now we have defined our object. If we look at the different references, we see that the mutex is passed to wait for a single object, which makes sense because this is waiting on a mutex. Here is testing the state equal to certain variables. Later, it's actually accessing 
resource manager index three, which is not valid because we haven't defined the whole structure. So we will need to define all of them. So everything makes sense. The next thing we want to do is we want to define the prototype for the function being called. Here we see k wait for single object is being called. This is a known API. We can see the prototype is this follow. In order to import that prototype into Ghidra, it needs to know the different types. We can see pvoid. is known. K weight reason is not. So in order to import it in the first place, we can define them as void star. The other thing is we need to remove the semicolon. So we're going to copy that, right click on K, wait for single object, edit function signature, and paste the prototype in here. And if we click outside, it's going to tell us to choose the different types for different arguments and return value. So we can select them. And finally, it has defined the type, the prototype of the function. We can see it's using the regular CDECL coding convention rcx, rdx, r8, r9. We validate that. And now we can see that it has additional arguments being passed. In this case, the zero or null pointer are passed. We will need to do that for all the remaining functions like k release mutex, tmp set notification resource manager, opdrep object, etc.